Our scripture comes from Psalm 90, verse 12. Teach us to make the most of our time so that we may grow in wisdom. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to say one thing as we begin our message today. Um, don't forget our evening service at, at uh, 5 o'clock with the Baptist. I don't know if I mentioned or perhaps I failed to mention that we will not be having an evening service here, but we will be there at 5 o'clock. So I encourage you to come and be a part of that. Last night, last night I was watching a ball game, watching Green Bay and uh, Aaron Rodgers. I watched him throw a Hail Mary for about the second time in the last five or six weeks, I guess, and, and, uh, and it was successful. They would lose later in overtime, but I thought, I thought about what we had talked about two weeks ago, about throwing deep. And, and uh, you know, I, perhaps you've tried that before, and it wasn't successful, but the thing about, about Aaron Rodgers, he tried uh, four, five, six weeks ago and was successful, and he was successful again last night. But I, I think in our lives, uh, perhaps you feel in the ball game of life, it's like you're headed toward the end of the game, but there might be an overtime. And it may be time to throw a Hail Mary and get it done. You know what I'm saying? That, that if, if our life expectancy was measured in the hours of a day, if you're here this morning and you are 22, is anybody here that's 22? <laughs> anybody else? <laughs> we have a younger version of a 22-year-old up front. But if you're 22, it's 8.20 in the morning in your life. If you're 32, it's 11.20 in the morning of your life. If you're 42, it's 3.20 in the afternoon. And if you're, what? if you're 52, it's 6.20 in the early evening. And we're going to quit right there. But we have this time, this life expectancy. A friend of mine who is a cardiologist in Knoxville... I uh, takes part a lot in, uh, in missions to Haiti, Dr. Clint Dorian. Um, Clint said that, I, I was in his office one day with a mutual friend, Chris Keelan, and, and we were talking, and I noticed in his office that there were some thick files. I mean, really thick files, and then there were very slender files. And I said... Uh, What's with the thick files? And he said, thick files indicate long life. How many of y'all want a thick file? <laughs> right on. But wherever we are in this walk of life, we're given uh, on the average uh, 25,550 days to live. That's about, uh, well, that, that ought to be plenty of time to get done what God has put us here to do. We look at, uh, we look at like uh, 168 hours a week. We all have the same amount of time. But our lives are all wrapped up in time. And, and therefore, time management is life management. Are you with me? Hello? It quit snowing. Lee read, teach us to make the most of our time. And so if you want to be used of God, we've got to learn how to manage our time. But it says, teach us that time management must be taught. It must be learned. That it's not something that just comes naturally. It's something we have to learn. And so today I thought I'd share with you five principles in dealing with with the time that we have, wherever we are in the game. 
You may feel like you're about to throw a Hail Mary, but a Hail Mary just might prolong the game. So whoever we are, if you're breathing, you have time this morning, right? <laughs> Hello? And what we're going to talk about as we build on this today, we're going to look at a 90-day challenge, three months, what God could do in, in changing, perhaps, your schedule in life. 90 days. That would put us beyond Easter. And by the way, uh, the last week of this month, I plan to start an Easter series. We're starting a little early on the words of Jesus. So I hope you'll, I hope you'll come and bring your friends to that. Maybe we'll learn something together. But time, I want to share with you. And look in your outline. And if you're a visitor here today, there's an outline, an outline in your bulletin. So be sure and follow along because today especially, I think, I think it's very important that we do this. Five principles that kind of get us started. And the first thing is I've got to assume responsibility for my time. In other words, I've got to stop complaining and start making some smart choices. Look at the scripture. We are each responsible for our own conduct. Your choices, not so much your circumstances, determine your calendar. You say, I don't believe that. Well, just act like you do for a few moments as we go along, all right? That, that quit complaining about your workload, uh, about how tired you are, your schedule. Because really our choices have a lot to do with how we walk out our day. Look again at Scripture. The lazy person is full of excuses. In any society, it seems, there's three kinds of people. We've got the accusers who blame everybody else for their lives or their lack of really living in the midst of their lives. Accusers. And then, and then we've got excusers, those who are always whining and making excuses. And we've all been there, haven't we? But thirdly, we've got choosers. Choosers, people that make choices. People that boldly make choices. And that's what I'm talking about here, that we accept responsibility for our lives, for our time. Secondly, I've got to believe that God will help me, that I've got to believe that he will help me if I trust him. A dream, a dream becomes a goal if it has a deadline. A dream becomes a goal if it has a deadline. And for a, a dream to, have a, to become a goal... And to set that deadline, you've got to have some faith. And, and we can use faith, the, the word faith as an acrostic, F-A-I-T-H, that, that as we look at our lives and look at our dreams, we look at F-A-I-T-H, F is focus. We've got to be a people that know what's important in our lives, that we focus on those things, that we focus on, the, on those things in our heart that God has put there, that, that's the F. The A is attainable. That, that it ought to be something that, that's not far out somewhere, but, but something that's real in our lives and something that is a desire and a drive. And, and it's attainable. You know, that, that you can get there. It may be bigger than you are, but as the scripture says, with God's help, you can get there. And the I is individual. Don't set goals for somebody else. You women out there, don't say, my goal is for my husband to lose 30 pounds. Shame on you. <laughs> you know, that, that it's an individual thing. We look at, a, at, at, at what does God want for me? That it's an individual, that God's put something on my heart. I've got to be focused. It's got to be something that's attainable. And, and it's got to be an individual thing. And the T is trackable, that it's measurable. That, that when you begin to seek God in things that are measurable, then as God answers your prayers, you can see it happening. Look what happened. You know, when I, when, when I gave my schedule to God and with his help, look what's happening now. Look what's happening. And, and begin to walk that out. It is trackable. It is measurable. And the H is it's heartfelt. It is something that you have a passion for. Are you there? Come out and play now. Take notes. F-A-I-T-H. Focus attainable, individual, trackable, and heartfelt that you are passionate about it. Still glad you came? Yeah, you can tell me later. 
There is nothing I cannot master, and then you circle these next few words, with the help of Christ who gives me strength. You master the clock, or it will master you. But, but as the scripture says here, with Christ, we can do something about that. We can do something about it. Thirdly, I've got to clarify what's important. You say, and quit saying this, I can't get it all done. Who are we kidding? It's all not worth getting done. Clarify what's important. Everything on your calendar is not that important. If your calendar is like mine. Clarify what's really important. What God has really put in your life and in your heart. That what, what he created you for. Because you say, I, can't, I just can't get it all done, Joe. That, there's only so many hours in the day. Don't worry about that. Because it's all not that important. It's all not that great. It's all not worth doing. And God doesn't expect you to do it all either. Let me say that. Look at the scripture. Proverbs 17. An intelligent person aims. That's the goal. And then he, he aims at wise actions. But a fool starts off in many directions. Know what matters. Know what matters. The most important thing we have in life is salvation through Jesus Christ. But the second or third most important is our freedom to choose. And in America, we have that. We have that. Sometimes we have to help other people have that and have that kind of vision. But we have a freedom, a freedom to choose, and we've got to clarify what's important. Look again at Scripture. We can choose the sound we want to listen to and the taste we want in food. Amen to that. And we should choose to follow what is right. But first of all, first of all, we must define, we must define what, what is good. Clarify what's important. When you get up tomorrow, if you haven't done that, you'll drift through the week and it'll be gone and you will not get it back. And I'll not get it back. You've got to clarify, squeeze a juice out of that day. And then fourthly, don't wait to begin. Don't wait to begin. That in, in time management, which is also life management, because life is time, an important word is no. No. You said that recently? Let's say it together. No. No. You learn how to say that. And for the things that are important, you learn three words. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. You learn that. You learn that. Don't wait to begin. Look at the scripture. If you wait for perfect conditions, you'll never get anything done. We must live. That, that life is lived under imperfect conditions. Life is enjoyed under imperfect conditions. Perfectionism is the root of procrastination. That if you wait for the perfect time, it'll probably never come. So you've got to learn. You say, someday I'm going to be happy. When this happens and this and this and this, things will be perfect. And you wait. And your life goes by and you wait. And you wait. Perfectionism, the root of procrastination. Life has to be lived, it has to be enjoyed under imperfect circumstances. And we serve a God that's strong enough to take us through. That in the darkest of days, we can split the night with the light of Christ. Imperfect conditions. Isn't that what it says? I mean, it's a little back entrance into that verse. But would you agree with that? Think about it. And then finally, enlist a spiritual partner. You cannot get control of your calendar on your own. Listen to the scripture. It's better to have a partner than go it alone. So you say, why take these five steps? For 90 days, for 90 days, begin to believe that God wants to use you. That you're not done. You may be at that hell Mary stage, but God will bring you through if if uh, um, Aaron Rodgers can do it twice, we can do it once. You understand, wherever you are in that time period of your life, of that 25,550 days on the average that God has given you, wherever you are, know that you are here, you're alive, you're breathing, 
God's not done. So what are, look at this next verse, what are four areas we're going to look at? And, and we'll do this quickly. I saw this verse and it jumped off the page. It's in Luke 2. Luke 2. I, I wish sometimes that, that, that uh, I, I love the Gospels. You know, the, the way they're written and, and, uh, and, and they're all kind of, a, they're a little different. Uh, Mark is like, is like a movie almost. The way it flows, you know, John's that deep. Uh, it's not like the synoptic gospels. There's just so many things. That, wouldn't you like to have written a gospel? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Joe. Doesn't they have a good ring to it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. Well, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. But, but listen to this verse in Luke 2. This is, this is where really the story of the birth of Christ is. But look what it says, too. Jesus grew in wisdom intellectually. Okay? And in stature, he grew physically. And in favor with God, spiritual growth. In favor with people, relational growth. Now those four areas, what I want you to look at. Just very quickly. The next 90 days, the first area, think about this. Intellectual growth. See there on your outline? Do yourself a favor, Proverbs 19. Do yourself a favor and learn all you can. And it goes on and says, and you will prosper. All leaders are learners. All leaders are learners. That, that you walk down the hall here during the week and, and you can hear Louise Ammons playing the organ or the piano because she continues to learn and learn and learn. Why is that? Because God's not done with her yet. And, and if you're going to be a leader, you've got to learn. Don't cut your head off. If you stop learning, look what it says, Proverbs 19, you will forget what you already know. That's why you've got to write it down. Because if you don't decide what's important, you won't do what's important. Is that right? You've got to decide it. It doesn't just happen. You decide. You make the choice. So what are you going to do? Intellectually, look at your outline. What do I want to learn in the next 90 days? Read a book? Learn a language? Learn to sing? Join the choir? Maybe we'll work out something with Bob that he'd let you in for 90 days. <laughs> a 90-day trial. He'll probably come up to me after this service and say, I can't believe you sent those people to me. <laughs> but 90 days, join the choir for 90 days and see what happens. Or look in, look in that uh, insert in your bulletin and look at all those small groups. I bet there's one that you fit perfectly in. What I want to learn. Secondly, physical growth. Now look at this. Don't you know your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. Okay, how can I improve my health in the next 90 days? Get more rest, uh, lose weight, change habits. Word of advice, feed the person you want to become. That, that's what I'm trying to do. It's a struggle. But I want to feed the person I want to become. Think about that. That'll work in anything. Intellectually, feed the person you want to become. Physically, feed the person you want to become. Relationally, feed the person you want to become. Spiritually, feed the person you want to become. But physically, it is something you see. You can look in the mirror and begin to see, begin to say, God, how should I look? You know? Feed the person. You want to become. You there? Thirdly, relational growth. My prayer for you is that your love will grow more and more and that you have knowledge and understanding with your love. Isn't that rich? Relational. Reaching out. Get into the habit of inviting. Now get this. Romans 12. Get into the habit of inviting guests and mark through that word and put pastor. <laughs> get into the habit of inviting your pastor home for dinner. Hallelujah. Feed the person. I know, Lord. I know. Feed the person you want. I, okay. <laughs> but relational. Developing relationships. How can I develop stronger relationships in the next 90 days? Is there somebody I need to go to? Do I need to forgive somebody? Do I need to invite somebody to church? Do I need to go across the street to that neighbor that I see taking the brother to the hospital all the time or to the doctor? Take him some food or just let him know I love him, care for him. What do I need to do to grow relationally? 
And then finally, spiritual growth. Grow in spiritual strength and become better acquainted with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, 2 Peter 3. You see that? How will I do that in the next 90 days? Will I daily quiet time? Will I begin to pray? You ever had a conversation, but it really wasn't a conversation, it was a monologue? I was in Chick-fil-A the other day. I was just felt led to go there. <laughs> I know, feed the person I wanted to come. I, I was in Chick-fil-A. And I ran into one of our members and a couple of kids, and we talked and talked a few minutes, and, and, and the kids were really wound up. And then when I turned back around and began to enjoy a number six, but um, <laughs> as I did that, there was this elderly lady standing in front of me. She worked there. And, and she just began talking. And, and it wasn't a conversation. It was a monologue. And she went through this thing, and, and my heart just broke for her as she shared about some of the some of this things that she was going through in her life and, and I began to share with her a little bit and I thought, Lord, I thought I was here for number six. I'm here because of this lady. <laughs> and, and, and so there was a ministry going on and I believe, to be honest with you, it didn't just go this way, it went this way too because I was learning something that God shows up, he'll show up at Chick-fil-A. Now think about that. You thought it was their idea to say, my pleasure. You ever heard that? You say, well, thanks, my pleasure. My pleasure. Spiritually, God will show up in the most incredible places. The next three months, look at your outline. What are you going to do? You, you might be a person that needs to be baptized and join the church. You might be a person that needs Christ, needs me or somebody just to sit down with you and talk with you. You might be that person. Okay, one last scripture, and we'll close. Ephesians 5. Living purposefully and worthily, worthily that God created you. You don't waste your life. Everybody here, you have worth. You may be like a dollar bill that's wadded up and sumped on on the ground, but it's still worth a dollar. You may have been to hell and back, or maybe you still feel like you're in hell, but you're worthy in the eyes of God. Living purposefully, purposefully and worthily, not as unwise, but as wise people. Making the very most of the time. See the time. There it is. The time. 25,550 days. Do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish, but understand and firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. We're made to be like Jesus. We're made to step out in faith, focused, with goals that are attainable, not for somebody else but ourselves here, individual, things that are trackable, that we can measure, with passion, with, that are heartfelt. That's who we are. 90 days. 90 days. Will I see you in the choir next week? <laughs> 90 days. 90 days. Will I see you in the booth up there? 90 days. What God want? What does he want from you? Don't you want to find out? Throw deep. Two weeks ago, we're still throwing deep. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you care enough to challenge us with life. That you love us enough to give us, to give us time to live our lives. There's not a person here who has not made a mistake and another mistake and another and another. Thank you, Father, that you're patient with us, that you love us, that, that you're there reaching out for us, you're waiting for us. You're there to say, I want to give you the strength to help you learn, to help you live a life that, that touches every area of your being, intellectually, relationally, physically, and spiritually. Thank you that you care that much for each one of us here. There's not a person here that you didn't send your son to die for. We are people of worth because of you, Father. Speak that word louder than anything that I've said, that we're people of worth because of your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen.